Fordstone, the Texblade warlock turned into Paladin of the Wild Mother. Travis Willingham's character in Campaign 2 of Critical Role is one of the single best examples of how to explore a topic without being pandering, without unnecessarily putting it in there, but exploring it to the degree it needs to be explored while remaining true to yourself and telling an incredible story. So let's talk about Ford, the man reforged. Ford was, at the beginning of his life, by all definitions, simply unremarkable. An orphan with no parents, ashamed of who he was, uncertain of who he wanted to be. He was alone. Nobody really cared for him, and so he had to learn how to care for himself. And that's really the basis of this story. Somebody who had no identity, had no one to give them an identity, and so tried to figure out what was important. What was it important for Ford to be in the world? You see, Ford was an incredible example of some of the highest highs and lowest lows a story can bring without putting too much focus on it. Travis explored a topic which many people just don't feel comfortable broaching because they don't know what to do. And yet, I think he did so in stride. When you start with a character who is so unremarkable, there's only one place for them to go, to become remarkable. But the journey that it was going to take to get there was really something else. See, as we watch Ford grow up and begin to start in the campaign, he starts as somebody who seems pretty confident and a very suave individual. He talked with a comforting Southern accent, and any time that he entered a room, many people just turned to watch him because, well, he was a figure who knew what he was doing. Kind of got some like piecemeal armor put together and stuff, but uh, my name's Ford. You're Wait. very handsome. I just need to tell you that. Thank you. Appreciate that. He took charge of the group that he was with, and he took care of them well. He made sure that Bo and Jester were protected. And that's how we got to know him first. A protector. A leader. A manly man. And yet that was not who he truly was. As we start to watch Ford and get to know who he is, we begin to notice inconsistencies. He seems way too comfortable just slipping into somebody else's shoes, speaking in a different voice, pretending to be somebody he's simply not. And I run up to him and say, You please, uh, uh, over here, I've seen one of those creatures. Uh, it's tearing into him and it's horrible. Please, uh, come quickly. Make a deception check. Oh, uh, fitting. Fifteen? Fifteen. He goes, <laughs> Uh, uh, which way, please, uh, point and show me. This, this way, quickly, please. Uh, go. He goes no, no, and, and gra grabs his blade and draws it out and kind of gives a sh <laughs> junk after him. Uh, the rest of you guys make your way down. And the longer that that goes on, the more we begin to realize if he's so confident in slipping into other masks, what is his current mask that he's wearing? Is that truly who he is? And we begin to see little breaks in his facade, people beginning to poke at him and wondering what's going on. Jester specifically trying to get at him because she knows something else is there, but he just doesn't seem to be able to let it all out. There's a wall there, and I think that's perfectly understandable. Is that why, well, you know. What? Well, I don't want to say anything. I'm afraid it will offend him. You can say it to me, then. <laughs> I just, well, most of the half-orcs I've seen have bigger tasks. But it's okay, for if you don't have a big task, it's not a oh, big, big deal. Oh, big tasks, right. It's, it's oh, yes. totally <coughs> fine. Thank you, thank you. You have thank smaller you, tusks. Jester. Is that an indication that. of other body he parts? He has no tusks, doesn't he? Have no tusks? Do you have anything there? Do we, do we do you have them. nubs? What are those? <laughs> Why don't you pull down your lower lip and show us what's going on in now for? Yeah, I'll pull down my lower lip. <laughs> yeah. You see very short, <laughs> yeah. nubby teeth with scratches and divots and chips on the top. On of all of the teeth or just, just on the teeth? The and it's this wall that we see that begins to show the dichotomy of Ford. He has this strong urge to protect everybody, this strong urge to feel the need to take care of them all because that is what he has determined a good man does. But at the same time, he also has convinced himself that being helped is not something a good man does. It's not something he should be able to do. And there's a reason for this. He has a mentor named Vandrin who he lost when he gained his Warlock pack. And that really is the defining feature of why he is trying to be this person. He has this southern accent. He has this bravado that he puts forward, and it is all because the person who he looks up to, the one person who was willing to actually take care of him, that's how they were. And so if that is what somebody does to take care of somebody else, then that's what he needs to be. And there's a few different times where we begin to notice that this is not who Ford actually is. This is a mask he's putting up because he's convinced it's who he must be. 
And it continues to go on like this for some time. He continues to convince himself that this is how he must act and who he must be until he meets Caduceus. Caduceus acts almost like a brother figure to him. Somebody who can tell that he's not who he's trying to be, but that there is a good person deep down inside of him. But he has to accept that he needs to be who he is. And there's this incredible example of using his warlock patron as an example of the masculinity that he continues to hold on to. This fake ideal of what a man should be mirrored perfectly by his patron. His patron constantly insists that he consume, he feed, he grows stronger, more powerful, he achieve greater things. He must be more so that he can be enough for everybody else. And yet, that's just not who he needs to be. It's not what he needs to do. And so you have this incredible mirroring of the patron trying to push him to be something else and Caduceus trying to convince him to just be who he needs to be, to just accept who he is. And we continue to have this battle back and forth as Ford's facade cracks further and further as he sees the very thing that he's trying to achieve in order to be the person he wants to be harming everybody around him. You all independently walk up to see there in scattered pools of blood, unmoving, the dead bodies a Ford, an Orly, the storm still flashing overhead, the thunder still roaring. In the middle of this moonless night, none of the other Armada ships, as far as you know, are aware of what transpired here. It sinks in. What had happened? Possibly why? And what needs to hopefully be done to rectify it. And see, in real life, this would be the moment where a lot of people would choose to simply double down. They have to be enough for themselves, they have to be enough for everybody else, and so they drive themselves to a breaking point. And we see this mirrored exactly in the scene where Ford confronts his patron. I will take the sword and hold it against my chest. Oh. And I will say, you need me more than I need you. Give it back. Nothing seems to happen. I push it into my chest. Ooh. How far in? A few inches, maybe, maybe an inch. Okay, so a few inches or <laughs> Yeah, no, let's go, let's, let's say an inch, see okay. what happens. The pain rocks through your body, uh, and as you press in, your muscles tense around it, your chest contracts, and you feel the white, hot, sharp pain up through your body and into the base of your skull. And you press it in, you can already feel the blood beginning to trickle from the wound. I'll take one step towards the pool of magma, and I'll push it in a little further. <laughs> I take the sword out, okay. and hold it over the pool. All right, you withdraw, and with that, it's like a gout of your own viscera, and this splatters across the out exterior of the wall, and like, begins to immediately I sizzle and smoke. I don't know how long I can hold this. And there in the smoke around the blade, your hand shaking, still stalwart and strong, a calmness comes across you. What do you do? I pull the blade back and throw it oh, into the. <laughs> it disappears through the smoke. <laughs> you hear. Right here, right now, Ford has chosen to toss the lie, this insistence that he has to gain more, consume more, be more powerful, into the lava, to never be able to be attained again. And see, it would have been really, really easy for Matt to immediately reward Ford for this, to immediately give him something else, which he somewhat did, but let's not forget. There was a large portion of time in this campaign where Ford would reject his patron and he had no powers. In fact, it went on for several sessions. Ford was powerless. He made the decision to push back against this and he was 
harmed for it. And that is true many times in our own lives. We will attempt to grab something, we will attempt to try and go for something, realize it's not healthy for us, push it away, and things don't just get better. Things don't magically improve because we've done that. The right decision is not easy to make because it doesn't immediately lead to improvement. Oftentimes we have to backtrack, get back on our feet, and then begin to make that improvement. And Ford had to do that. He was not immediately rewarded for the decisions that he made. He had to rebuild himself. He had to be reforged. And as time goes on, and as he continues to learn this lesson and struggles so hard to figure out who he is, his friends begin to be there for him. And that is the thing. Before this point, he could not let them in. He would not let them in because that's not what a good man does in his eyes. But now that the lie has broken, it is shattered and he is forced to look at who he is. His friends are allowed to come in. They see him at his absolute weakest point and they tell him, we'll help. You're gonna be good enough. You're gonna be okay. They give him his magical items and he even proves himself without any powers. He steps up to the plate as he is and he shows them that he can be a good man, that it is a good man that is inside of him, but he had to stop putting on that mask. And honestly, this leads to my favorite allegory of the entire story, because as he found out who he was, who he wanted to be, how to be a provider while still allowing other people to help him, to be the man that he hoped he was, he went and talked to Vandrin. He found him again, he spoke with him. And what did Vandrin do? This pinnacle of who Ford wanted to be, who he pretended to be for some time, Vandrin found happiness, found peace. He did what he could to help those around him, and then he let himself be happy. He rested and took care of himself. And Ford, after all this time, after figuring out who he was, he was a protector, he was a fighter, he was a warrior, he too chose to just let himself be happy and love. There are too many people in the world who are convinced of this image of themselves that they think they have to be. And you know what? I know that my audience is a large portion of it because, hey, it is almost all men. So I know that you guys have dealt with this. I know that this pressure to be a man, this masculinity weighs on everybody. And I think Travis did an incredible job exploring it, showing it to its fullest and showing that honestly, it's bullshit. No, there is nothing manly about just shutting yourself off. There's nothing manly about just not accepting help. There's nothing manly about not accepting the fact that you have the weight of the world on your shoulders and you have to accept help with that. There is nothing manly about being weak and not accepting it so you can improve. And that is exactly what Ford's story was. He had weaknesses, he had strengths, but he focused solely on hiding his weaknesses and never improving his strengths until finally he was broken down to the point where he had nothing left and he could either improve or he could walk away. And that was what a real man, a real person would do to step up, to learn what your strengths are, to improve on them, to accept your weaknesses and let other people help with them. And that's the story of Ford. And I really just appreciate the story that Travis told. If you want to hear another story, here's the story of Caduceus right here. Go out and make the world your own.